Welcome to the Deep Dive. We're here to get you up to speed without drowning you in details. Today, yeah, we're taking a really close look at the Internet Computer Protocol, ICP. Now, ICP has been around, uh, known for huge ambitions, maybe a bit complex sometimes, but some recent stuff, some breakthroughs, they really demand attention. So our mission here is to pull out the key stuff from the source material we've got, analyses, updates, predictions, all that. We want you to get what ICP is doing now, why it matters, and you know where it might be heading. And the big focus, this thing called Caffeine AI, huge launch coming up. It's got this wild self-writing internet idea. Could really change app development for, well, for everyone, even non-coders. And it's important to see how ICP is positioning itself, too. It's not just another niche project. They're tackling some really fundamental, tricky problems in the blockchain world, things others often sidestep. Building a broad foundation. It's a quite a unique path they're carving out. Okay, so let's unpack that. Caffeine AI. You said it's one of the biggest launches on ICP. Mm. What's the core idea? Sounds like it's for regular people like you and me, people <laughs> who aren't developers. The idea is you use like common language, yeah. sort of like chatting with ChatGPT, but for building apps. Exactly. You basically tell the AI what you want to build. And it, well, it builds it in seconds, potentially. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And you can build on that, make things more complex over time. Yeah, you can iterate. Now, it's not going to, you know, spit out the next GTA 6 from one sentence. The focus is more on functional applications, website services. But yes, you build, you refine. Interesting. It kind of reminds me of that Steve Jobs quote, you know. Yeah. Have faith in people. They're basically good and smart. Give them tools. They'll do wonderful things. Yeah. Caffeine AI is really leaning into that democratizing creation, lowering those technical walls. Right, giving people the tools. Yeah. And it's launching soon. July 15th, San Francisco. That's the official date. Yeah. But people already got a sneak peek, right? Back in June at that World Computer Summit in Zurich. Yeah, June 6th. The demo apparently caused quite a stir. I read the room was just packed, like almost a thousand people. And Dominic Williams, the Definity founder, he was on stage, built what, three or four dApps? flawlessly mm -hmm. in like 30 minutes. That's the story. People were apparently calling it like ICP's Apple moment or iPhone moment, that sense of a big shift in accessibility. Hmm. So what's the big vision behind it, this self-writing internet thing? Well, the Caffeine Manifesto lays it out. The core idea is anyone can create websites, apps, services. Just by talking to an AI, you see them appear instantly online and then you update them just by continuing the conversation okay but how do they handle updates like data loss errors that's always a risk ah uh, yeah that's key they've apparently built a language specifically tailored for ai interaction it features something called enhanced orthogonal persistence fancy term but basically means data state is automatically saved and managed during upgrades the goal is no data loss no critical errors when you update the app through conversation making it really robust for that continuous build process Okay, that is interesting. So how is self-writing different from, say, vibe coding? We hear that term too. Good question. Vibe coding is more about developers using AI as a collaborator, right? Working with AI tools. Yeah. Self-writing, as ICP describes it, pushes it further. It's aimed squarely at non-technical users, enabling them to create fully working apps end-to-end, -end, just using natural language. No traditional coding needed at all. Right. Taking the developer completely out of the initial creation loop, potentially. Potentially, yes. Yeah. And the implications. The sources suggest they could be pretty big. Think individuals, communities, building their own hyper-local tools personal stuff, or entrepreneurs, schools, NGOs, building powerful tools much, much cheaper than before. And developing countries. Huge potential benefits there, too, yeah. yeah. Offering digital sovereignty, cybersecurity, without needing that deep technical expertise pool right away. Okay, but the obvious question, does this kill tech jobs? Well, interestingly, the prediction mentioned in the sources is probably not. It might actually create more. How does that work? By massively widening the number of people who can create apps, it could dramatically boost the demand for specialized roles. Think AI oversight, refining yeah. the apps, generating specific content, custom integrations, that sort of thing. Hmm. Okay. More creation leading to more specialized work. And they have a target for this. Ambitious one. They're aiming for one million apps launched on ICP via Caffeine AI in its first year. One million. Wow. Yeah. And I heard they're already marketing it. Billboards in Silicon Valley. Yep. Seems like the push is already underway. They're not being quiet about it. Okay. So Caffeine AI is the flashy front end. Yeah. But what's underpinning all this? What are ICP's core tech strengths? That's where it gets really interesting, right? Absolutely. Let's talk deep tech. 
One big thing, vet keys, they're live now. They tackle a huge problem. All data on most blockchains is public. That's a non-starter for tons of applications. Right, privacy concerns, sensitive data. Exactly, vet keys unlock new stuff. Like personal data vaults, truly on-chain encrypted chat, time-locked data reveals, fair auctions for DeFi, things that need confidentiality. And what about efficiency? We hear a lot about costs in blockchain. Yeah, ICP scores really well there, especially next to Ethereum, according to the sources. Get this. For $1 worth of smart contract data storage, on ICP, you apparently get over 200 million bytes. 200 million. Compared to Ethereum. Compared to about 44 bytes on Ethereum, it's a staggering difference. 44, wow. And computation cost. The average cost per instruction? allegedly over 40 million times cheaper on ICP than Ethereum. 40 million times, okay, that's hard to ignore. Huge implications for developers, for costs. Definitely. And another big piece is how ICP handles data from the outside world, from Web 2. It can connect Web 2 and Web 3 without needing traditional oracles. Oracles, those are the data feeds, right? Yeah. Bringing off-chain data on-chain. Correct. Services like Chainlink, Pith, they provide that. ICP's approach allows its smart contracts, or canisters, to make HTTPS calls directly. Securely, it's a pretty significant capability. Doesn't necessarily make oracles obsolete everywhere, but it offers a very different integrated way to get external data. Less complexity, potentially fewer failure points. Okay, direct connection. And building on that integration idea. Chain fusion, what's that about? Right, chain fusion. Think of it as the next level of ICP's work, that started with bringing smart contracts to Bitcoin. Now it's extended to Ethereum, and just this month, it went live for Solana too. So what does it let you do? Essentially, it lets ICP smart contracts securely control assets on other blockchains natively. You can manage your Bitcoin, your ETH, your Solana tokens, whatever, directly from an ICP canister. It's about augmenting all your assets from one place. So it's not just a bridge. It's positioned as a more secure alternative to traditional bridges, which often have vulnerabilities. There's an analogy used comparing it to something like Flare Network, which adds smart contracts for chains that don't have them. ICP with Chain Fusion is more like making the smart contract itself universal able to reach out and manage assets directly on their native chains, like uh, giving everyone fishing rods instead of just handing out fish, enabling direct interaction. Got it. Okay, interesting distinction. What else is new in the ecosystem? I saw something about an OI wallet. Ah, uh, yeah, OI wallet. It's incubated by Definity, designed to be non-custodial, but really focused on user experience. The descriptions say it's very sleek, super simple UI, built purely for humans, as they put it. And the security. Non-custodial usually means managing your own keys, seed phrases, which can be a pain or risky. That's where OI is different. It uses a model they call network custody. Your keys aren't just on your device, and they aren't held by a central company either. Through some advanced cryptography, the keys are sort of managed by the ICP network itself, distributed. So the user doesn't have to handle the raw private keys or seed phrases directly. That's the goal. To improve security over both traditional non-custodial wallets and custodial ones, while making it much easier for the user. Hmm. Network custody. Okay. And what about actual payments? DeFi. Using this stuff in the real world. Progress there too. There's one sec. It's a decentralized bridge specifically for moving USDC stablecoins in and out of ICP. Designed for high speed and volume, and notably it works without needing rep tokens like Elevith. More direct. And how does that connect to DeFi? Well, it directly powers things like Eon, which is a lending protocol on ICP. Because of one sec, Eon lets you do things like, say, lend Bitcoin on its native chain and borrow USDC against it, potentially on another chain, integrated via chain fusion. It unlocks those core DeFi use cases, lending, borrowing, liquidity pools, decentralized exchanges, all leveraging these cross-chain capabilities. Okay, so the pipes are being built for more complex finance. What about just buying coffee? Huh. Yeah, the everyday stuff. There's AO and Pay. It's specifically about bringing real-world Web3 payments using ICP. And the claim is pretty big. It's now accepted by over 20 million merchants through the AO and Pay system. 20 million, including big names. Yeah, the sources mention brands like Starbucks, McDonald's, suggesting significant reach already. That's a major step for real-world utility. That is huge. Yeah. Okay, so lots of building. What does the activity look like on the network itself? Any hard numbers? Oh, yeah. The data cited is pretty strong. For development activity in the last 30 days, ICP was ranked number one. 
557.7 notable dev events. That apparently beats out every other top project, even Ethereum in that period. Number one in dev activity, what about specific areas? Also ranked number one for top AI and big data projects by dev activity. So that focus on AI, like with caffeine, seems reflected in the overall work being done. And network usage, transactions. Over 400 transactions per second capacity being utilized, over 725,000 ETH equivalent transactions processed, and Canister's ICP's version of smart contracts, over 948,000 of them deployed. That's a lot of active code. 948,000, wow. And the number of projects building on ICP. That's grown significantly too. Now over 350 ecosystem projects listed. Mm. Compare that to maybe 160,180 reported back in early 2024. And yeah, a lot of those new ones are AI focused. Okay, so developers are building, projects are growing. Yeah. What about users? Are people actually using this? That's where internet identities come in. That's ICP's secure authentication system. The numbers now hit 2.782 million. And how does that compare? It was around 2.511 million about a year ago. Mm -hmm. So steady, significant growth in the user base, that network effect, more users, more developers, more apps. That's really fundamental for the long-term value, right? Absolutely. Okay, so impressive tech, growing ecosystem, real-world integration starting. What does this all mean for the market? For ICP's price, its trajectory, let's look at the charts. Right now, ICP is trading, well, kind of low. Levels we haven't seen since last November. It seems to be holding support around $4.54, bouncing between maybe 4 bucks and $6.50. Pretty range-bound for now. Stable, but not exciting, maybe. True, the current price action is sideways. But looking broader, there's an interesting signal flagged in the sources coming from the Bitcoin chart. It's described as a potentially historic bullish signal. It happens when Bitcoin's in an uptrend, but a momentum indicator, the stochastic RSI, dips way down into the oversold zone and then crucially breaks back up above its midpoint, the 50% level. It suggests momentum might be swinging back upwards strongly. Okay, a Bitcoin signal. How does that relate to ICP? Well, historically, when this specific Bitcoin signal has flashed, it has often preceded pretty large rallies for ICP itself. Oh, really? Like when? The analysis pointed to September 2022, got a small rally even in the bear market. Then October 2023, that led to a spectacular rally for ICP. Oh, maybe I remember that run out. And again, in the summer of 2024, another really impressive rally followed the signal. Okay. And the point is, this signal is flashing now. All three components of that historical signal are apparently confirmed as of today, according to the source analysis. So if history is any guide, the suggestion is ICP should rally in the coming months. Hmm. Is there a specific strategy tied to that? Like when to potentially get in? Yeah, the analysis outlined one approach. Once you see that Bitcoin signal confirmed, you then watch the ICP chart, specifically on the three-day time frame. You look for a close above its key moving averages, the EMA band, 21 and 34, and also the SMA 50. And when that happens. In the past instances where this setup occurred after the Bitcoin signal, that's when those really big rallies, like 400% plus, kicked off for ICP. 400%. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's significant potential. Any analysts putting price targets out there? The sources mentioned some looking at maybe 17 to $23 for ICP on the weekly chart, perhaps heading into the fall this year. 17 to 23 Okay. But let's step back. Why have altcoins generally felt kind of stalled lately? despite all this building? That's a big question tying into the macro picture. One perspective links altcoin performance, especially as a percentage of Bitcoin's market cap to broader economic activity. They use the ISM index, which tracks manufacturing activity as a proxy for the economy. And the argument is, speculative assets, like many altcoins, find it hard to really pump when the overall economy isn't muting. And both that economic indicator and the altcoin market share relative to Bitcoin have been kind of tanking, or at least down, for about three years now. So the economy is holding crypto back. What's the main drag? Interest rates seem to be the big culprit mentioned. High rates make borrowing expensive, slow down business activity, less money flying around, less speculation. One expert quoted basically said, it's all about interest rates being higher, leading to less people buying, even calling it a depression starting. Wow, strong words. So the real bull market everyone's waiting for, it depends on rates coming down. That seems to be the dominant theory in the sources, yeah. It's yeah. tightly linked. There's even speculation mentioned about politics influencing this, like a potential change at the Fed. Former President Trump has apparently said he'd want Jerome Powell out, replaced by someone who'd uh, crater interest rates down. Right, so a potential political shift could dramatically change monetary policy. Could. And there's another factor. 
potential stablecoin legislation. If supportive laws pass, the idea is a wall of capital might flow into regulated stablecoins. And that would lower rates, inject cash. Potentially, yeah. Could add significant liquidity to the market. Some analysts cited to believe this confluence of factors could lead to the biggest bull market in crypto history. Biggest ever. When might that happen? The timing speculation mentioned focuses on maybe between July and whenever Powell might leave office, or if certain banking deregulations like the supplemental leverage ratio changes happen. It's all interconnected. Okay, lots of ifs on the macro side. Yeah. But assuming the market does turn, why would ICP specifically benefit? Fundamentals. Despite market conditions, ICP keeps building and, importantly, earning. The sources rank it comfortably in the top 10 of all blockchain assets when it comes to generating actual revenue. Top 10 in revenue, how much? About $14 million in the last year, according to the data cited. That's significant. And relative to its users. Yeah. Another point made is that ICP apparently makes more money per user than any other blockchain out there, which suggests a strong underlying economic model. Long term, the view presented is that this could support a valuation in the tens of billions, maybe even hundreds of billions, if adoption continues. Okay, strong fundamentals, high revenue per user. But what about perception? Marketing. Sometimes that matters as much as tech. That's a fair point, and it was raised in the critiques mentioned. Some argue Definity's marketing hasn't quite created that uh, emotional buy-in or a strong mythos, mm -hmm. especially maybe with younger crowds. Doesn't have the same established reputation or track record as, say, Ethereum. Right, the narrative matters. It does. But you could argue the things we just discussed, the network effects, the internet identity growth, the massive ecosystem expansion, the big push with caffeine AI billboards, that is the counter-narrative building, yeah. right? Showing tangible progress, real-world use cases emerging. It's actively addressing that perception gap through action. Exactly. The proof is increasingly in the pudding, so to speak. The growth is undeniable, even if the broader market hasn't fully caught on yet. So wrapping this deep dive up, ICP clearly isn't standing still. The innovation is relentless. The tech stack is unique, tackling really hard problems. And the growth, whether it's users via internet identities or the sheer number of projects building, it's happening, even with market headwinds. Absolutely. And connecting that back, those strong fundamentals, that constant development pace, it really positions ICP well. If and when market sentiment shifts, it seems poised to attract serious attention, capital, and users. So here's a final thought to leave you with. We've talked about this self-writing internet from Caffeine AI, empowering anyone, literally anyone, to build online. And we've seen the push for real-world use, like with Aon and Pay hitting millions of merchants and the DeFi infrastructure getting built out. How might this fundamental shift where creating sophisticated digital tools becomes accessible to everyone and using crypto for everyday things become seamless? How might that actually redefine what we even mean by digital literacy in the next few years? What new skills might you need, not just to code, but to effectively participate, create, and really thrive in this kind of evolving, decentralized creative economy? Something to think about.